there were color photographers that went around and shot graffiti from their perspective. It was more of the beauty of the color. Flint's photography to me was more of the soul. It's amazing that you have someone that takes that medium and has really done something beautiful with it. It's admirable. It really is an admirable thing that he's done. The pictures that he has, they're very special. They're incredibly historically important. Iconic. He's an icon. This is the VGA. No, it's in my other bag. But anyway, there's no connection for it there. That does have a, I think he said, a, D, a DCMI. Oh. Needs a, a, um, a DCMI, HIMI. In any event, it needs a, need, yeah, needs, a, needs a cable that I don't have. What we're going to do is actually, since it's a small group, you can get close. We're going to look at it on my laptop. OK? So let me just run this Y over here this way now. Uh, hopefully that will reach a little bit. In any event, my name is Flint Chinari. I'm a longtime photographer. I started as a photojournalist and um, basically documenting my, my life. That's what was easy for me to do. You know, I didn't have to travel far. I, <laughs> like when you look at the uh, textbooks, I would look at the photographs. And I would learn how to uh, identify photographers by their signature styles. What I like to do is just find things happening, use, your, use my eyes, and capture them. Because seeing things and capturing them are two different, two different beasts. I've, I've taken pictures of graffiti, and that was one of my early photo essays. And basically, these guys were my friends. I used to write my name, and I used to write sayings. And this is going back uh, decades, decades. It's a pleasure to see you again, you know? OK, good. My name is Flint Gennari, I'm 62 years old, and I do photography and video and art for a living. I grew up in Brooklyn, outside of Prospect Park. I really wasn't that understood by my family, my school, even some of my friends, and I really didn't fit in anywhere. In school, we had a social studies class, and the teacher talked about Kilroy. Kilroy did graffiti, and writing during World War II. And he put it on the boxes of bombs and ammunition that got shipped overseas. And he got pretty well known because he was tagging the right things at the right time. So everybody was wondering, who was Kilroy? And he just used to write, Kilroy was here. That's what put some ideas of writing into my head. But I was looking for a name. And the Flint movies came out. Our man, Flint. <laughs> While they were a little bit too hokey for me, I started writing Flint. Don't let that sleepy look fool you girls. Graffiti is something any kid could do. You know, you don't have to special money, you don't have to have special this, special that. You get yourself a marker and your own passion or the time you put into it, you're going to get out of it. Whenever I wet someplace, that's why I tagged. It's not like later became bombing and groups of three or four people would go out and attack the subway system. It wasn't really like that. At that time, in the 60s, there was a TV commercial for El Marco, Magic Markers. The Mark of El Marco. And it was a, a Zorro-type figure comes in, I don't know if he had a horse, but he came in and he did Z, and he did Z. That was very interesting. I mean, Zorro was big at the time, actually. There was a comic book, Zorro, there was probably a movie, Zorro. So El Marcos were really my first magic marker. My name is George Colon, and I wrote AIM SSB, O22 SSB, and AVE SSB 
from 1973 to 75. I went to the high school of art and design, and that's where the mecca of graffiti was. I didn't know it was, I found out. And I used to see flint tags, and I love the ones, you know, ladies holy, that's kind of like a beautiful thing to write. And, and, and it was very clearly written, so I admire his clearness in writing, and it was legible. I was writing sayings, and I wanted people to read it. So I tagged my name first, then I wrote a saying. I wasn't doing vandalism. I was getting a message out there. People didn't know who did that. What's Flint? My name is Alan Kett, and I'm the co-founder of the Museum of Graffiti. Flint, they don't call him Flint. They call him Flint dot, 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 right? Because that's what he was. Flint dot, dot, for those who dare, et cetera, et cetera. My people that I wanted to read was the average Joe who was going about working nine to five, making a living. What I wanted to do was give hope to the people out there that had to go about living day to day. The Rebels, LSD, Ohm, Chad. He's probably one of graffiti's most beloved characters. Chad and I got together, you know, got high and tripped a lot and whatever, and we talked a lot. We talked about making a graffiti crew, and it took us a couple of weeks to figure out the right name. Chad told me was that the Beatles first wanted to use the name, the, the Rebels has, has their name, you know. That's what he told me. You know, once he said that, I said, sure. He knew everybody. He knew Zephyr, for myself, Hoy, the 56 boys, Flip, Dime. I always saw myself as a rebel. You know, I grew up watching, you know, James Dean, Elvis Presley, all these guys that, that really were anti-establishment, you know. So I created a world. I created a world of graffiti. From, from living in dark rooms, which I literally did, I mean, when I had a house on the island with a dark room, I, I was there all the time. If my folks wanted me to come for the holidays, they would have to come pick me up and get me out of the dark room and bring me to Brooklyn. You go in there and, and you lose sets of time. You just, uh, you just, Develop film, print pictures. You just get absorbed in the dark room. But do I miss it? I don't really miss it. You know, I'm too busy learning new things. Editing movies and processing photographs digitally with Lightroom, and Photoshop. There's a lot happening. I got lost in my own world of looking at photographs. I wanted to photograph photo essays. In the sixth grade, um, I did a photo story, which was a comic book with word balloons, and we used a Polaroid swinger. And we had a three days off from school. I wrote a story, I got actors, and we robbed a store, which my friends, folks owned. And then, you know, we beat each other up, and I caught the crooks, I took the money back, and things like that. It was great, it's a good little story. Got a lot of attention in the school, too. Flip One is one of my oldest friends. He actually lived on the next block. And the funny thing is that his father was a subway conductor. His father was not happy with him, I can say that much. But writing, it takes over your life. So here I was writing on the walls. It's a secret identity, nobody knew it was me. And when the, these people came into my, my spare, I photographed them. My name is Charles Henry. Tag name was Flip One, 1970s graffiti artist. The reason why I'm here in Miami mainly is uh, because of the photo that Flint took of me back in the 70s. Flint, uh, my, uh, my neighbor, my partner, at the time my mentor, I guess like you can call it that, because uh, that was the early days of his photography. 
uh, he used to follow a lot of the graffiti artists around, including myself, and uh, take pictures. And I thought it was pretty cool when I saw his results. At first, it's like, what's this guy doing? He's, you know, taking, snapping around. And we're talking back when we had film cameras, you know, little rolls of film that you had to send out to the drugstore to get developed. But Flint was taking them home and developing them himself. He did black and whites at the time, which interests me. I thought it was like magic to see all this work that he's doing during the day come out the next day, and it was beautiful. Doing this particular exhibition, which is called Style Masters, and wanting to do an exhibition that has a basically a historical approach, I wanted to be able to show young writing, the birth of the movement, the early years of the movement, and also the people that were there. So not just the walls with lots of signatures and tags, but the actual human beings behind it. And not too many people have those photos. You kind of have to be an insider to be able to even have access to these young artists, young writers, and so Flint, with his series on Flip One, I think is one of the best series that I've ever seen anybody shoot, especially for the early days. I loved, as a kid, tagging the insides of train cars, of the subway trains, and there was a special feeling. There was a special energy when you did that. And the only people that ever experienced that are writers. The preparation of the marker, the acquisition of the ink, breaking into a train yard and then being in the quiet space that's a train car is so special it's such a unique experience and not too many people see that ever that photo to me captures the innocence of writing the solitude of it it's that moment that writers that have ever painted trains know that's like there's there's this zen moment when you're there you're in the train you're painting, whether it's on the outside or the inside, and the rest of the world falls away. The power of photography is that if this fella had no images of his artwork or his making graffiti, he might not be well known now. You know, I got Chad in front of a paddy wagon, I got Chad in front of a police car, I got Sonny, you know, writing his name with a big grin on his face. Yeah, I got some classic pictures, you know. It's like, uh, I'm glad somebody was there to document that. One of the three guys that day. This is our first uh, exploration of Miami and we're just leaving the Holiday Inn and we're going to see what this great new museum looks like. The first graffiti museum in the world. It's devoted totally to graffiti and that's all it's going to be devoted to. It's like a dream come true for a lot of graffiti artists, believe me. Back 40 years ago, we would never expect this. I'm alive for a reason, you know. I'm trying to get my artwork out there, trying to get recognized. But, you know, I'm still healthy and I still got a, a long way to go. You know, you don't give up. You don't give up. A good photograph could change the world, and it has. It has.
If I could go back in time, knowing what I know now, I would change so much. Now I'm the kind of guy who could take 100 pictures just walking down a block, but I would take so much more. City, I was writing my name. I went underground and I bombed on the trains. My folks thought I was nuts and I would get bust, but I knew that it was my ticket to fame. Couldn't catch me, cause I knew the game. You write big and bold, top to bottom your name. I live day to day, what can I say? I got back at the system cause they are insane. Steal me some paint. Never was a saint. Get up, get down, go out, go round. What can I say? I live day to day. Now I just want to get paid. It's different today. They just want to put you away. Follow you around and photograph the town. Collection of hits will put you on the list. Not your biggest fans. They want you in the can.